Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on parameters. Early on, I have done a series of discussion on parameters. For example, initially, I start off with Z parameters, which is also known as impedance parameters. After that, I discuss on Y parameters, which is also known as emittance parameters. Recently, I have also done this S parameters, which is known as scattering parameters. This video, I'm going to introduce another new parameters, which is A, B, C, D parameters. This video, I'm going to discuss why we need another parameters, A, B, C, D parameters, in order to determine the performance of a two-port network. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part one series discussion on ABCD parameters. However, on the playlist under the description, okay, there are various parameters such as Z parameters, Y parameters, S parameters, ABCD parameters, and very soon I will add on the rest of the parameters into the playlist. So guys, please take a look on the playlist if you're keen to know more about parameters. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this video by pressing the like function. Okay, so guys, if you are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel. Please also on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your strong support. There are various names for these ABCD parameters. Initially, they are also known as transmission parameters. I guess you know why they are called T parameters. The T actually obtained from transmission. Okay, why ABCD is known as transmission parameters? Okay, because ABCD is used so-called to describe how much power is actually sending over, or in short, power transmission. So therefore, they have these transmission parameters. ABCD parameters is also known as cascade parameters or even chain parameters. Let's take a look on this diagram here. From here, you can see that there are cascade device one, two, three. They are all connected in a cascade manner or chain manner, and we can easily make use of ABCD parameters to describe okay, the combined effect of this three cascade device. So basically, this is the first use case of ABCD. We can easily obtain the ABCD parameters as illustrated over here. The Z, Y, and S parameters representation can be utilized to categorize a microwave network with an arbitrary number of port. Okay, so we can describe a microwave network simply by using the Z Y and S parameters, which I have described earlier on. Okay, so the numbers of port, it also can be like one port, two port, three port, etc. However, in a practice, many microwave networks are composed of a cascaded connection of two or more two port network. Okay, over this diagram here, you can see that there are actually two of two port network. So this is the first two port network. This will be the second two-port network. So in practice, basically, you can see that we actually cascade a lot of two-port network together. So therefore, in such case, it is convenient to define a 2 times 2 transmission matrix, also known as ABCD matrix for each two-port network. So basically, from here, you can see that, for example, this is one of the device. I have this ABCD matrix to describe this network. This is another second two-port network. Again, it has its own set of ABCD parameters to describe the microwave network. ABCD matrix of the cascade connection of two-port network can be easily found by multiplying the ABCD matrix of the individual two-port. Okay, for example, over here, you can see that basically this is B1, I1. Okay, so basically this will be the output. B2, I2, so I can use this A, B, C, D parameters to describe this first two-port network. As for the second two-port network, again, I can have a unique set of 
A, B, C, D parameters to describe the second two port network. And then I can easily combine the overall effect of the cascade by simply multiplying the matrix of the first two port network, multiply by the second two port network, and then I can actually obtain the combined cascade A, B, C, D parameters. So basically this is the U case of A, B, C, D parameters. I can easily add the cascade network okay, by simply multiplying them together. The two port model of the ABCD parameters take input current I1 at port 1. Okay, so basically this will be port 1, this will be port 2. In short, port 1 will be the input, port 2 will be the output. So therefore, this will be the input current I1 with an input voltage equals to V1. So the input voltage will be V1. The output voltage and current are V2 and I2 respectively. Okay, so basically this will be the current at the output. This will be the voltage at the output. The current direction are taken so that I1 is entering and I2 is leaving the two-port network. So from here, you can see that I1 is actually entering the two-port network while I2 is actually leaving the two-port network. Among the four electrical quantities, V1 and I1 are the dependable variables. As for V2 and I2, they are so-called the independent variables. So let's take a look on this equation here. Okay, over here, you can see that V1 is actually depend on V2 and I2. So therefore, V1 is known as dependable variables, while V2 and I2 are called as independent variables. Basically, V1 need to rely on V2 and I2 in order to obtain the value of V1. Same for I1. Over here, you can see that I1 need to depend on V2 and I2 in order to obtain the value. So therefore, I1 is also known as dependent variables, while V2 and I2, they are known as independent variables. So basically, this is what these lines want to describe. Let's understand some of the ABCD parameters name. Okay, for example, we have this A, B, C, D. What does this mean? So this is A, B, C, D. So A is actually known as open circuit reverse voltage transfer ratio. Okay, so before I come to this equation, let's take a look on this equation here. How can I obtain A? Okay, I need to find A. So I need to let I2 is equal to zero. Okay, when I actually let I2 equal to zero, I can actually have an open circuit at the output. Do you agree? So when I actually have an open circuit at the output, I will actually get I2 equals to zero. And therefore, this term disappeared. And A is simply V1 over V2, as you can see from here. Okay, so therefore, A is known as open circuit reverse voltage transfer function. Okay, because it's input over output. So therefore, it's a reverse voltage transfer ratio. Okay, the unit for A is unitless okay, because it's voltage over voltage. They cancel each other. So therefore, unit A is actually unitless. So A is known as open circuit. As I told you that at the output, I need to have open circuit in order to achieve I2 equal to zero. And basically, you can see from the A is V1 over V2, which is the reverse voltage transfer ratio. What is B? B is called, called as a short circuit reverse transfer impedance. Okay, let's understand what is actually B. Okay, so B here, if I want to know what is the B value, firstly, I need to let V2 equals to zero. And when I actually want to let V2 equals to zero, I need to short circuit at the output in order to achieve V2 equals to zero. So therefore, the name short circuit is over here. So once V2 is short circuit, okay, how can I actually get B? Okay, will be V1 over I2. Okay, as you can see from here, V1 over I2. So basically, it's a short circuit reverse transfer impedance. Okay, so you can see that the unit will be ohms because it's voltage over current. Next, let's move on to C. C is known as open circuit reverse transfer emittance. Okay, so again, how can I actually achieve C? So in order to achieve C, I need to let I2 equals to zero. And how can I let 
I2 equal to zero, I need to do an open circuit at the output. So when I actually do an open circuit at the output, I2 will be equal to zero. And from here, I can easily find the value of C, which is I1 over V2 as it illustrates over here. Over here, you can see that it's actually a reverse function of ohms, which is also known as Siemens. So basically, it's current over voltage. So basically, this is the name for C, open circuit reverse transfer emittance. And last but not least, on D. Okay, what is actually D? Okay, so D is known as short circuit reverse current transfer ratio. Okay, how can I actually obtain D? Okay, in order to obtain D, okay, I need to make V2 equal to zero. How can I make V2 equal to zero? Then I need to have a short circuit at the output, correct? Once I have short circuit at the output, V2 will be equal to zero, and I can easily find the value of D simply using I1 over I2. So basically, this is what it means. So from here, you can see that it's current over current, so it's unitless. So D is known as short circuit reverse current transfer ratio. So hopefully you have a better idea what does this A, B, C, D, the name actually implies. Next, okay, let's understand the type of circuit. So if it's a symmetrical, A will be equal to D, okay, which means that any, any so-called you can reverse the orientation, okay, either input or output, it doesn't meet any difference for symmetric circuit here. Reciprocal, okay, which means that AD minus BC must be equals to one. Okay, you can see from here, AD and then BC, they are so-called reciprocal, so therefore they will be equals to one. Open circuit, okay, open circuit means that the A and C need to be equals to zero. Okay, remember, in order to achieve open circuit, okay, the A and C need to become zero. As for short circuit, okay, B and D, need to become zero. Okay, so basically, let's continue. Okay, before I continue, so if you learn something from this video, okay, please consider to like this video so that it can reach a larger audience. Please also consider to subscribe to this channel if you really learn something from this video. Next, okay, so let me use a few ABCD parameters to describe some useful two-port circuit. Okay, so from here, you can see that these are all the circuit and I can use this A, B, C, D to describe the circuit. Okay, for example, for the impedance, for the emittance, for the transmission line, I can easily use this A, B, C, D to describe the circuit. Okay, so there are all together six useful to top circuit okay, in, to use A, B, C, D to describe. Okay, so I don't think we need to memorize all this. Okay, so on the next video, I'm going to discuss how can we actually make use of this A, B, C, D in order to determine okay, what happened here is basically with a circuit, I can actually obtain the A, B, C, D parameters. So based on the different circuit, you can see from here, okay, you actually have different forms of A, B, C, D parameters. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.